How do y'all be delicious people? I'm here today to review Alien. Here's the thing. I never really expected to actually review this film. And all of a sudden one night I was just sitting around and uh, someone who I usually watch films and stuff with was like, hey, how about we watch Aliens? And I'm like, okay, sure. Like, normally I like to watch things in order, but whatever. <laughs> like, so we watched Aliens and I'm like, oh crap, I have to review Aliens. Because, like, I saw it, so I'm like, I should just probably review Aliens to just kind of get this out of the way. But then I realized shortly thereafter that I'm like, oh crap, like I need to go and eventually put these movies out in order. So Aliens is just going to sit there until I watch this movie and then review it. So when you're probably going to hear the review of Aliens, it's probably going to seem like these two aren't going to be connected and that'll be an obvious thing. Alien. Uh, Alien to me, honestly... The movie Prometheus has basically ruined this movie for me. <laughs> like, after watching Prometheus, that basically feels like a carbon copy of this film, uh, I think Prometheus has ruined this movie for me. Uh, really, Prometheus goes out of its way to do a lot of goofy, weird stuff that doesn't... Like, it's just a bunch of a lot of goofy things. And I guess a lot of people could like it for that, but... That movie feels like a blatant copy of this movie. And so while I was watching this movie the entire time, I'm like, oh, so this is just like Prometheus. Realizing that, like, while I was watching the entire movie, because really to me, like, the more thing that I, like, clung on to, uh, really for me was probably the ending of this movie. Because every single time, like, just Sigourney Weaver getting into that spacesuit <laughs> was just, like, that was probably the best part about that entire movie for me. I honestly, when watching this movie, I honestly didn't like Sigourney Weaver's character in this film. I just didn't. There's a lot of times where she is being contradicted or overrided because there's superior people over her. Or she's like, well, hey, I'll go and do it. And they're like, no, like, I'll go and do it. Ripley also, for bulk of this film, is honestly a person who is very much afraid. But, like, she is to have to be forced to confront her enemy in this film and eventually once we get into sequels like yeah like justifiably ripley was scared in the very beginning of this and in sequels she has like night terrors and all kinds of things but like ripley just becomes a much stronger woman especially after this first iteration and I guess that's the real interesting thing about these films is you like you start to see a shift in this character as the movies are to progress where really just Ripley has just been through it all. So she's just kind of like, Psh. like, dude, I can just like uh, toss a basketball and it'll just make the shot. <laughs> Like, that's how easy freaking uh, me taking down aliens are in these films. It's like, I can just toss a basketball behind me and it'll go into the basket and whoop de doo uh, I wonder how many takes that that took to get that ball in the basket. Uh, so, this movie, honestly, to me, has a lot of visually amazing things because... It's an alien movie. Everything about this has to be really cool and visually amazing. But also, like, this to me, like, just kind of feels like a lot of other just space movies that have kind of copied and pasted uh, what Alien has tried to do. Like, you can probably look at uh, almost like Event Horizon and kind of feel like a copying and pasting of Event Horizon from a, from this movie specifically. 
like if you watch Alien and then watch Event Horizon like back to back, you can see several similarities in that film. Uh, but yeah, I like I can say there's some visually amazing things in this film. Uh, this movie can still either be scary to people or it could be kind of uncomfortable for someone to watch because it's like, ooh, like, oh, this buildup of this thing going to happen. Yee, ju, gee, golly, mm. Like, I'm getting uncomfortable. Ooh. I, I, like, that's how I was, that's how I was sounding through the entire watch of this movie. Yeah, like, that's exactly how it's like, ooh, gee, golly, mm, no, no, who <laughs> No. Like, I knew everything, like, it felt like they gave me, like, here's the wind-up in the... <laughs> like, every single scare was just like, you know this is going to happen. Plus, there are so many iconic things that had come from this that you're just like, oh, yeah, chest thing, yeah, guy getting head... Mm, yeah, like, eh, like, like you would have had to have lived under a rock and have never heard of this movie before to, like, not know what is to be entailed in this movie. So, if you bizarrely have lived in blissful ignorance, bless you. Because, <laughs> man, like, you're going to go into this movie and you're like, wow, this movie is actually interesting. Like, I want to see what's going on in here. And, like, and plus also, like, it kind of feels there is some, like, copy and paste moments a little bit here and there from Alien movies. But that doesn't mean that they're not fun films. That doesn't mean that they're not, uh, like, a cool adventure. It just feels like this movie goes at it from a much slower pace. So, with that, I am not going to waste any more time and get to spoilers about this movie. I think it's about time to go out of our way. To say that we've seen this film uh people might ask am i going to eventually review prometheus after me talking about this probably not <laughs> i don't think i'm ever actually gonna like review prometheus like that is a movie i honestly just could not give a crap about because <laughs> me like it ruined like this film for me but on top of that like I don't really hold Prometheus in a very high regard. Like, to me, I was like, there's a lot of just goofy things going on in that movie just to, like, uh, have something look, like, gross or disgusting or or just, like, ugh, like, in that film. And that's what that film just tries to do. Like, it's a creep-out movie. And so I don't hold that movie in high regard. More than likely, probably the only reason why I will probably review that film is if it is trending for some reason or if someone is to recommend or ask or whatever me doing it then i will begrudgingly do it but with that said let's get into spoilers about this film because really i'm gonna probably try to rush through the spoilers of this one because there's a whole lot of hang time in this movie so let's get into spoiler time spoiler time it's about the time we can spoil this movie. By the way, I re I just I just like hours ago uh, did a little shave of the head. So a lot of people might be confused. What is the most recent review and what is the most like oldest whatever? Like I have twenty movies just holding off to eventually be put onto this channel. So this is actually the most recent review that I've done. And a lot of people are just like, oh, well, like, but who knows when eventually this one will actually go out there. Uh, just because I don't know if anybody's going to really have any interest in Alien. So I might put this out and I might just be like, this is probably a bad decision. Uh, but it might just be like, hey, this is my most recent review and that'll be a mistake. So <laughs> I don't know how well this is going to be received, but... I review the other one, so reviewing this one. So, let's go into spoilers. So, 
very beginning of this, uh, like, I think it kind of gets to the point in this movie where I have to, like, start to invest in anybody other than Ripley in this film. Uh, just because, really, like, Ripley, again, is to, like, say that she's going to do something, but someone else is going to do it. And so, like, that's a bulk of this movie where it seems like everybody else is to be doing something. And then Ripley is just like, well, I'm just going <laughs> to I'm just going to be in the ship, just kind of, you know, just twiddling my thumbs until eventually this movie is over and I'm going to save the day because I'm going to be the last uh, Starfire at some point. So... For this film, uh, these people are to go off onto this planet because it seems that uh, these guys are to need resources anyways. And so since they are to spot a new planet, they are to have to go onto this new planet regardless. It seems like they are contracted if they are to see a new planet, they are to have to discover and explore it. Because I guess if they don't, they will not actually get paid. Is what they tell uh, two of these guys. So, both uh, both Parker and uh, both Parker and Brett are to eventually ask Ripley once uh, once Al uh, once uh, Lambert Dallas and. Kane start to go onto the surface of this planet and start to check things out because all these people had awakened from these sleeper pods to find this new planet and have to discover it. So, uh, so both Parker and Brett are to ask Ripley, Hey, are you, are they serious about like, that we might not get our cut and Ripley's like you're gonna get your cut no matter what like if something if we are to land on this planet and and instantly like we're gonna have to run out of this planet because there's something wrong with it they will still get their cut like any little bit of exploration or information that they could get from this planet as soon as they hit on this planet, money goes to them. And so Parker and Brett are realizing that. And they're like, eh, like, so I guess we're going to get paid regardless. Eh, like, so who cares? Like, both Parker and Brett, like, wanted nothing to do with going on this planet. Because they're just like, oh, well, yeah, we discovered a new planet. But we're not going to go on it, right? And, and Ash and Dallas were like, but yeah, like, that's, like, the protocol. If we see a new planet, we have to uh, go and explore it. Like, that's just a thing. So, Dallas, Lambert, and Kane go and uh, find this planet. And so they're starting to discover bits and pieces about it. Eventually find some... A uh, fossil of some alien and they are to kind of like check its bones and just be like man like uh could you mat like could you imagine if this thing had a lot more of other things like it here like because it seemed at first they were thinking that this guy was going to be the only alien that was present but they would be wrong so Kane is to find a spot where he needs to be, like, propelled down. And so Dallas and Lampert uh, propel Kane down to this spot for him to go and uh, kind of explore. And I'm like, how much of this, like, rope does this guy have? Like, it feels like it's, like, thousands upon thousands of yards of rope. So, Kane is to go into this, like, catacomb of sorts, and Kane is to just kind of make his way 
Eventually, he slips and falls, and and Dallas is like, "Hey, you all right?" And Kane is like, "Eh, I just slipped and fell right into a nest of aliens. <laughs> I wasn't sure about it." So. Kane is to find some absurd rock, but it's not actually a rock, it's an egg. He'll find that out eventually. Kane is to see life that is starting to move in this egg, and so Kane is like, hmm, there's some kind of life coming on out of this. And, like, it's also, it's opening up. Because, like, Kane was, like, knocking on it just to kind of see if, if anything would happen, because why not just knock bizarrely on a thing that you were to assess or assume that it's some kind of rock? So, Kane is to watch this thing open, and it's taking a while <laughs> to open and pop out or whatever. Like, it kind of gets to where the sequels, we have this being done a lot faster, but, like, all of this is just the rough drafts and prototypes of all of this stuff. So, it's going to take time. Like, it's going to be a difficult thing to showcase in this first film. Like, there was this goofy moment where Brett was in the ship, and bizarrely the alien dropped down, but then all of a sudden the alien actually wasn't dropped down. It was actually back in the air. It was back in the, the ceiling again. I'm a little confused about that whole shot. Like, it kind of feels like the alien is, like, bouncing up and down from behind Brett and just looks weird. But anyways, Kane is to go and check out this this sweet egg because I guess he just is like, well, I guess my spacesuit can just protect me. Yeah, that's not going to happen because this uh, uh, face hugger breaks its way through Kane's... Uh, helmet and latches on to his face like a latcher onto like a big old latcher per thing and so uh dallas and lampert are dragging kane along with them to get back onto the ship and so ash is to make his way to the door uh, because they have to, like, scramble to, uh, try to get this thing off Kane and help him out. And Ripley is like, well, wait a minute. Like, I'm not going to let you guys in because you know our quarantine policy that, like, this, this thing has to settle for 20, like, whatever this guy is, like, going on with him. Like, we have to have a 24-hour hold. Because we don't want you or him or anybody contaminating, like, this place. But Ash just goes ahead and opens the door, uh, throwing away procedure and policy and whatever to have these people just come in here. Because Ash, we find out, evidently has some malfunctions eventually going on through this movie and eventually ash is to realize that he has certain orders that he is following to a t and bashal anything else so dallas and lampert are taking kane to uh to this spot to take uh kane's helmet off and they're like cutting the helmet and i'm like how is it that they can, like, perfectly cut all of this stuff? Like, I'm just kind of like, how can they trust all these devices to, like, perfectly cut these things? It just seems kind of weird to me. So, Kane's helmet gets cut off to see that he has a face hugger just, just covering up this guy. He's just, like, all, like, all hugger, no face. So... Like, I, I'm kind of interested in how exactly they did this thing. Because it might have been that they tried to make this face hugger, like, look so, like, Kane could actually breathe while having this thing on him. Because you can tell that the thing is, like, giving oxygen or something. So, like, it kind of, like, seems like this apparatus or whatever could help 
the person who's wearing it breathe. But I don't know. Like, I would like to have asked, I guess, John Hurt at some point. Uh, like, eventually, like, what uh, happened to him? Like, how head thing happened? But also, I would never want to volunteer myself to pull one of those bad boys on to just like, oh yeah, I guess you could breathe under like no. <laughs> like, never going to happen because I don't want No, not for me. I don't want my my there to be a hole in my chest anytime soon. Or me eating any kind of like uh like Chinese food and then all of a sudden I'm like, no, thank you. I I I I would just say a boatload of no for that. Just just nosies, you know what I'm saying? So, Kane is they're they're trying to figure out how to detach face hugger from Kane's face. So they decide, you know what? How about we just like how about we just start cutting off one of the legs? Like I would have actually tried to get like the tail piece off. Because it seems like the tailpiece is consistently, like, tightening on Kane's neck. And Dallas is seeing that, you know what, like, I think that this thing is going to try and take this guy's head with it if we try to take it off. So... Ash goes like, well, hey, how about we just cut one of the legs? How about we just try that? Because I'm sure this thing doesn't have a defense mechanism. That's all of a sudden when it's going to, like, lose one of his legs, it's going to, like, try to attack somebody or stab somebody or whatever. You would have thought that that would have happened. So, but it has another built-in defense mechanism for any time you were to kill one of these bad boys. So... The one thing I didn't realize about the face hugger that I don't think showcases in like uh, Aliens 2, but maybe I didn't see that correctly. I didn't realize the face huggers had acid because, or maybe they retconned that. I don't know. Uh, so Dallas and Ash are like, well, hey, how about we just cut off one of the legs? That sounds like a good idea. So. Ash goes and tries to cut off a, a, a thing of leg right by the knuckle. And all of a sudden, they are to see acid coming down and leaking through the ship. And now everyone, all the people are all scrambling to see how far this acid is to travel and eventually see where it stops. And Dallas is taking a pen from someone and kind of like seeing like, oh, like, yeah, I guess this is like, like it's, it's stopped here. So like, they're like, man, this is, this is going to be a real true, like killing machine. Like either way, it's going to get you like you could go and murder it to death, but still like, it's gonna, you know, be one of those like. Yeah, like, I'm just gonna just burn through the hole of your sh I'm gonna put a hole in your ship, if you don't mind. So, isn't that great? So, you would have thought that maybe they would have went with the, like, uh, they probably wouldn't have been able to, but still. They could have maybe gone with the, uh, like, the Jason from Jason X way of doing things, where they freeze the alien, and... Then, like, just be like, well, okay, well, I guess since it's frozen, we're just gonna kick it out to the, kick it out to space, and, like, that'll be okay, that'll be fine, uh, because I don't know how much real defense mechanism that this alien will have after he, it's been frozen, but they never really, I guess, did that in this film. Every single time, it was always just like, yeah, just, like, kick it out of space, like, kick it out of space, and we'll be fine. Because, really, the same defense that they do for the second one, they do for this one. So, anyways. Let's go on. So, Kane is to eventually have the facehugger just give up 
and just like unlatch itself onto Kane, and Kane seems fine. Like, hey, Kane, let's high five and let me never ever actually touch you again because you had an alien on your face. And so, uh, Ripley is like, well, where is the thing? Like, we need to like be able to like get rid of it or we need to be able to do like find out where it is because if he um if this thing unlatched into Kane, maybe it'll unlatch to someone else. But so all of a sudden like Ripley is looking for this thing and all of a sudden this face hugger just falls from the sky and hits Ripley. She's like, Mother <laughs> Face Hugger So Ash decides he's like Man, I really want to dissect this thing, and I want to, like, I really want to see what all it's working, what all its bits and parts are. And Ripley is like, no, like, I think that we should just, like, destroy this thing, like, send it on its way, get rid of it, whatever. And Ash and Dallas are like, no, like, we need to examine it. We need to figure out what it is. Because everybody just desperately always wants to, hey, there's something new. We need to, like, research this thing. We need to, like, keep a sample of it. And we need to uh, let other people know it exists. So that way people would desperately want us to go back to that planet to get more samples of it. And it, it's basically just like Jurassic Park 2, where you have, like, Jeff Goldblum who had to forcibly be back in like the dinosaur world where he's like yeah like at first like you're like oh that's beautiful and then all of a sudden there's the running and the screaming like that's basically what this is so Kane seems fine and like there were people that were just considering they couldn't figure out what the si situation was with Kane like Parker kept yelling that Dude, how about you just freeze him until, like, we can figure out what the heck we're going to do with him. Just freeze him and then just, like, send him off to some place to where they can, like, figure out what to do with him. And Parker kept mentioning that, like, I don't understand why they can't freeze him. I'm like, freeze him. Do it. Do it now. I'm like... They could have done that with the alien. Like, they could have gotten the alien, like, into the, the freezer spot and freeze him and then just, you know, just kind of just let him on his way. You know, just kind of shove him off to space and just have him have a good time. But, so everybody thinks everything is back to normal, bizarrely, because in an alien movie, you just think, like, oh, yeah, like, I guess the worst is behind us. And so everybody's just going and eating rice or Chinese food or something. It seems like they should be having cereal because it seems like they have containers that look like cereal containers, but I guess it's Chinese food. So all of a sudden, everybody's like, hey, this seems great. Like, <clears throat> I think everybody is fine now. I think we can just go about our days and get the heck out of this planet. Because nobody else wants to get a, a face hugger all up in their face. So I think we can safe to say that we're never wanting to go back onto this planet again. So all of a sudden everybody's eating a meal. Like it's Tuesday again. All of a sudden Kane is just like. And here's the moment. Here's the iconic moment. They're kind of like slapping his back. Just going like, hey man, are you choking? Like, did some go down the wrong hole? What's going on there, buddy? And so Kane is like... And, like, Parker is trying to get this, like, fork or something so that way Kane doesn't swallow his tongue. But Parker's having a hard time just wrangling this guy in. And so... Uh, so Kane is just, like, doing this, like, this table mumbo... And people are trying to, like, figure out what is going on with him. Like, Ash is trying to, like, inspect him, but, like, they can't figure out what the heck is going on. And so, all of a sudden, Kane's chest is to have blood on it with his shirt. And they're like, whoa, what is this? So, all of a sudden, Alien is to pop out of chest and say, hello. And everybody's like, I'm getting the f away from this. 
Yikes, no. Uh, Parker is to have, like, a fork or something to try to, like, maybe get at it. But Ash is like, no, let it go. Let it, let it leave this room. Because shortly thereafter that, they start to go from room to room to find out where that is. And so they try to, like, seal the rooms off, like, so that way they can be able to uh, try to avoid all this rigmarole. So, they're now having to find this alien thing. And so, Ash makes the consensus that they need to have, like, some kind of detector, like a motion detector. Like, a lot of people remember in Aliens where... Uh, like, they have these motion detectors to see where the aliens are coming. And that looked a lot better in the sequel movie compared to this movie. And plus, also, it was kind of funny because Ash was, like, explaining how this thing works, how this motion sensor thing works. But then once they were to get out of there, Ripley is like, uh, like, I'm sorry, like, this works like garbage. <laughs> like, like, uh... Like, detection my ass. Like, no, like, this thing is garbage. Like, so... Everyone thinks that they're safe by uh, going and spotting this thing. And Brett is to come up with this weapon that is like a cattle prod esh like thing. Where at the very tip of it, it's to, uh, like, be, like, a thing that, like, could like electrocute something so they're thinking like oh, okay like we'll just easily just like use this and they'll be fine and like yeah like this sounds great so everybody starts to of course separate because that's the smartest thing to do in a horror movie is to separate people and so i think parker ripley and uh, and Brett are all together, and then I think Dallas, Lampert, and, uh, Ash are together. So, uh, Parker is to have a net, and so is Brett, to catch this thing after, I guess, Ripley is to go and, uh, hit the thing with a cattle prod, so bizarrely, they're going to try to catch this thing, which seems always seems weird to me in a movie. Like, I would just be like, let me just, like, try to get this thing, oh, you know, dead. But I guess it's hard for them to do that because it's an acid-wielding enemy. So they eventually spot in a motion sensor that something is moving around by these lockers. And so... They go to open one of the lockers, and out comes a cat that, like, flings at them. They're like, oh, my God! <laughs> so, uh, so Brett, realizing that it's a cat, just lets it go, and then the cat just runs off. And Parker's like, what are you doing? And Brett is like, it's a cat. And Parker's like, no, like, you should have, you should go on and catch this cat because... Really, uh, every single time, we're going to think that it's the actual alien. It's going to actually be the cat instead. Like, we already made the stake, mistake right here and now. So, Brett, you go and get this cat and go off to, you know, just find an alien on your way there. How about it? How about you? How about you just find an alien while you're making your way down there? So... Brett goes off to find his cat. It's like Jones, Jonesy. And he's like, meow, <laughs> making all kind of cat noises and whatever. So Brett goes way off on the reservation where there isn't anybody else. And so Brett is like, meow, like, hey, cat, where are you? So Brett finds that it seems that this alien has shed its skin and so Brett is continuously looking for this cat regardless, even though realizing that more than likely he's going to step himself into some alien situation sometime soon here. Because shedding of skin, like, that didn't come from the cat. 
So, Brett is still looking for the cat, and he ends up winding up finding an alien instead. Because the alien is to kind of, like, swing its tail behind Brett, and then the alien is to fall behind Brett, and... So Brett eventually is to be like, well, there's probably something behind me now, isn't there? And so Brett is to look behind him. And then all of a sudden the alien is not like directly behind him. It's in the ceiling going and taking its double mouth attacker thing and just giving Brett a little bit of a hello. So... They realize that it's like, yeah, I guess Brett is just a freaking goner. Like, sadly enough. Uh, they just, like, uh, take his body and just, like, shoot it out of space like he was nothing to them. There was no real true funeral. It was just like, yeah, let's go and just shove this body off into space. Because, nah, who cares? So, yeah, so they find his body, but they don't find the alien there. So they just shoot him off into space. So, uh, really, they eventually decide that it seems they find that the alien is making its way through the ventilation shaft. And so they're deciding, well, how about we send somebody down through the ventilation shaft? But instead of bringing this, like, cattle prod-like weapon, let's just have... A, let's just give this person a flamethrower and have uh, this person push this alien into a direction where they could airlock and, uh, and have him go and be shot out to space. So Ripley is like, well, hey, I'll go and do it. And Dallas is like, no, like I'm the commanding officer. I will do it. Because, Ripley, you can't do anything until the very end of this movie. So suck it. <laughs> and Ripley is like, well, I guess I'll just be twiddling my thumbs more. And maybe I'll do some missions here and there. But, uh, you know. So, Dallas is to go into this uh, ventilation shaft. Which, honestly, is really, like, this part is actually really cool. Like, I like this part because, like, it can actually be an actually scary moment in this movie. Plus, you're kind of like, oh, man, Dallas, <laughs> don't die, even though I know what happens in this movie because it's obvious. But, like, man, like, Dallas, like, mm. So, Dallas is going through this ventilation shaft and he's telling people to like close and shut things behind him and whatever. And it seems like he is figuring out where the alien is, but not exactly. And it gets to the point where, where Dallas is to try and just like, like, okay, the thing is coming, but from where? Like, uh, like, like this is coming from somewhere, but I can't tell exactly where. And so, like, even though they have this scanner thing, they can't tell if it's above, below, whatever. So, Dallas makes the mistake of going down a thing of, uh, of a ladder to find that the alien is on his, uh, is on his side and so Dallas goes and flames on to see an alien there to go and attack Dallas. And so they're like, man, like this thing is much harder than we thought it was going to be. So both Parker and Lampert go back down to find uh, Dallas. And all they really find is his weapon there. So... Lamperk is at this point just like scare shitless where she's just like how about we all just take the uh like the escape pod and make our way freaking out of here like how about we do that because this ship is 
basically toast anyways. And Ripley is like, well, that's great and all, but the, uh, the escape pod can't fit three people. And so Lampark is like, I don't care. Like, I just want to be away from all these aliens. Like, isn't there any other thing that we could do? <laughs> it's like, like there, there's really nothing. It's basically just, hey, everybody just get ready to go into the escape pod and then also eventually die. Eh, like, you'll feel bad about it, but you won't feel bad for everybody because you know what was going to happen. You know how these movies roll. You know who's been through every single one of these movies since any of all of them. So, so both Parker and uh, Lampert are going on to this one section to find all of these oxygen cans. Uh, which honestly looks very much like Event Horizon. Because, man, does this movie look like copy and paste. Like, like Event Horizon saw Alien and was like, yeah, we gotta do some stuff from that movie <laughs> to look similar. Uh, but anyways, so Parker and Lampert are trying to get these oxygen tanks and trying to check all of them and like trying to scramble to get that. And so Ripley is uh, like trying to get some things prepared on her own. But really, she's just going and trying to find that cat so that way this cat can find where the alien is because it seems that this cat can be able to... Like, they bizarrely just desperately want this cat for whatever reason. So, uh, so, <sighs> Lamberg is to try and just check these oxygen things, and a alien is to appear right in front of her. Lamberg is so terrified that she can't move. Parker is telling Lamberg, you need to move because you're right in the, the fire zone of where I would be going and attacking this thing. Uh, oh, I didn't actually cover any of the ash stuff. Uh, so let's cover that now. No, let's let's get to the point of uh, a point where I can put a pen in this and then we'll go back. So uh, Parker goes and he has to now fight this thing. And that ends up just being a mood point because this alien is to kill Parker with Mouth Attacker and kill Parker and then eventually also kill Lampert. And so Ripley is going to be the only one left because here's what happens to Ash. So put a pin in that. So Ash is to... Uh, to have to come up with scenarios of how they can get them out of this. And Ripley is kind of getting ticked off with Ash because there's no real consensus that Ash is coming up with. So uh, Ripley is going into this system called Mother and she's trying to calculate uh, their chances of survival and stuff like that. Dallas goes in there before and there's a lot of variables that this thing can't actually compute. So it can't actually give them an answer. So Ripley goes into Mother and it seems that there are there were some objectives set up that Ash was following to the letter. And eventually Ash appears behind Ripley to just be like, yeah, like it feels kind of bad that like like all of these things were to happen, but yeah, like, I'm just following objectives from Mother. So Ripley starts attacking Ash from, one, scaring the crap out of her, but also it seems that Ash had this plan all along about sabotaging all of these people and just doing what this order was, which didn't seem like the safest route to go into for any number of these people. So Ripley and Ash start having this fight between one another and Parker goes and tries to save Ripley and uh, Parker starts beating uh, Ash with this like uh, metal device of sorts and 
it gets to the point where eventually Parker hits Ash so hard that his head comes falling off or comes flying off. But Ash's body is still fighting Parker to where the event where eventually Parker figures out how to take uh how, figures out how to take uh Ash out with Lampert's help. So uh Ripley eventually turns Ash back on after he's dismantled to see if Ash could possibly have information on how to kill this alien. And so when Ripley is to turn Ash back on, Ash is to basically say that this alien is a perfect weapon, a perfect machine, and there is no way for these people to live through this, let alone beat it. And Ash is like, well, hey, like, I don't like your chances, but, like, good luck to all of you. And, like, Ripley just, like, smacks the head and uh, Ash is to turn back off. So uh, that resolves Ash and what had happened to him because he's actually an android or a robot or whatever where his face comes flying off. So now... Uh, Ripley is to realize that everyone is dead, so Ripley just decides, dude, I'm just gonna go and I'm gonna take this, uh, escape pod and get the heck out of here. She's going to, uh, detonate a self-destruct on the ship and make her way out. So, uh, Ripley is to eventually try to do this self-destruct, like, thing of the ship. And she tries to make her way to the escape pod, but there's an alien in her way. So Ripley tries to scramble back to try to turn off this self-destruct-like thing. And uh, Ripley tries to, like, stop the self-destruct, but she can't. So Ripley just tries to figure out how she can get into the... Uh, into the escape pod and eventually the ship just blows up. So uh, Ripley is on the escape pod thinking that everything's fine, that she's going to go and put the cat in the, uh, the sleep tank and then she's probably going to go into the sleep tank. Well, Ripley eventually is to like start looking around and start to like uh, like, hit some buttons on this whole, like, uh, escape pod, and just like, yeah, like, I think, uh, like, eventually I can go to sleep fairly soon. All of a sudden, there is an alien that is to pop its hands out and, and start to move its head in this part of this, uh, this, uh, escape thing, the escape ship. And I guess this alien had been had gotten caught in this section and just kind of just stayed there until Ripley was to, I guess, show some motion. So Ripley is to go into her space closet to go and put on one of her spacesuits and then watch as this thing is to move around. So Ripley is terrified at this point and wanting to just like, man, can't this thing just go away? Like, can't this thing just not move or anything or whatever? Like, it's scaring the crap out of me. So Ripley eventually gets out of her closet and then is to start hitting buttons to try and, uh, like, release some, uh, release some, like, steam or something like that for this alien to make its way out of this spot that it's in because Ripley now desperately needs to now confront this thing. And so she does. So once this alien is to get out of his, out of its spot, Ripley is to of course hit the airlock and have this thing go flying out. And after that, Ripley is like, well, sayonara, like, I, like, like, yeah, that thing is freaking handled with. 
And so then Ripley after that is like, well, is there any other freaking aliens that are around here? Like, maybe I should double check so that way I'm not going to die in my sleep. So uh, Ripley goes on and is to go into her sleep pod. And really, that's just the way that this movie ends. So with that said, I think that's where I'm going to end this review. I'm going to get out of here. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.